Suki Utu and a very good evening, everyone. Welcome back once again to MSBS Weekly Guided Meditation by Prago. Today is the 8th of October, 2024. We would like to extend a great welcome to all new viewers to this channel. It's certainly good to see all of you once again on this online platform. We are very grateful and glad to have with us Prago Adibalo to conduct this weekly guided meditation and sutta study. This week, Bhante will be continuing on the subject on the he heaven. Bhante will be leading the homage to the Buddha and taking a five percent for Buddhists. Now let us compose our minds, put our palms together and welcome Bhante. Over to you, Bhante. Okay, thank you, Terence. <clears throat> We start off with bowing to the Buddha three times. First bow, second bow, third bow. <clears throat> Homage. Namo Tatsa Pagavato Arahato Sapma Sambuddhatsa. Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhatsa Namo Tatsa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhatsa Three refuges Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tamang saranang gachami, sanghang saranang gachami, dutiyampi buddhang saranang gachami, dutiyampi tamang saranang gachami, dutiyampi sanghang saranang gachami. Tatiyampi buddhang saranang gachami. Tatiyampi tamang saranang gachami. Tatiyampi sanghang saranang gachami. Five precepts. Panati pata viramani sikha padang samadhyami Adina dana viramani sikha padang samadhyami Kami sumicha chara viramani sikha padang samadhyami Musa wada veramani sikha padang samadhyami Sukra me raya maja padmadatana veramani sikha padang samadhyami Sadu 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 <coughs> Okay, so uh, good evening, everyone. We are still continuing this topic on the heavens. Uh, it's not the Bee Gees uh, title. Um, we are going to cover on the Salayaka Sutta halfway. So we already covered the 31 planes of existence. Yeah, so we've already like briefly orientate you on the different heavens. Um, some of you may want to aspire to go certain heavens. Of course, one of the ideal uh, heavens would be the pure abode uh, in the fourth jhana plane. So that is like if a non-returner goes there, uh, then you kind of like, you get enlightened. Um, probably later on in this series, we might introduce something close to a non-returner if a person practices the sublime states, even though they may not enter the pure abodes, uh, after that kind of uh, their lifespan is up in their rel uh, relevant Brahma world, Brahma realm, uh, they will reach enlightenment. 
So this is the closest to like a pure abode. Okay, so we move on to the next slide. <clears throat> okay, so this is the wish. After Buddha introduced all the realms, eh, he said a person can, um, if they follow the 10 meritorious deeds, they can make an aspiration eh, to be reborn in all the human and heavenly realms. And the last one, if one, a person of Dhamma conduct, harmonious conduct, should wish, oh, if I, with the ending of the mental fermentations, were to enter and remain in the fermentation free awareness release and discernment release, having directly known and realized them for myself right in the here and now, it is possible that one, with the ending of the mental fermentations, will enter and remain in the fermentation free awareness, release and discernment, release. Having directly known and re realized them for oneself right in the here and now, why is that? Because one is a person of Dhamma conduct, harmonious conduct. <clears throat> so, um, for those who have been following this sutta, um, the target audience is a lay person, you know, the lay Brahmin. Eh? They went to ask the Buddha this question, what kind of deeds you do can go to hell, what kind of deeds you do can go to heaven. So the Buddha taught them uh, the 10 meritorious deeds, quite a refresher. For thoughts, you have uh, thoughts of non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion, that's three. And the four right speeches, uh, refrain from telling lies, harsh speech, idle chatter, divisive speech. And uh, three actions, uh, refrain from killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, this total 10. So if a person were to observe this well, uh, not only they can aspire to be reborn in all the heavenly realms, and in this last option, the Buddha can mention uh, a person can even aspire to reach enlightenment, release. That means a person upon death, they make this aspiration, they can escape rebirth. Uh, so a lay person is uh, possible uh, to experience and ex attain Nibbana. So this is the Sutta. So there are two words <coughs> um, down here. We have this. Fermentation free means uh, a person free from defilement. Eh? Fermentation is something like defilements. The term, I think the Pali term is asavas. And awareness release and you have this discernment release. So um, the Pali would be cheto vimuti, awareness release, and discernment release, eh? which is panya vimuti, uh, liberation from uh, wisdom. <clears throat> that awareness release is re liberation with the mind. So there are two types, two routes. Uh, some people say it's, um, how do you call it, both together. Um, so in the Panya Vimuti Sutta, in this uh, version of this liberation, uh, release, liberation by wisdom, the Buddha mentioned a person um, can enter the different levels of jhanas. Uh, from the first to the eighth, even the formless concentration. And once they at each level, they can reflect and discern um, each level of concentration, they will experience this discernment release. So unlike in the commentaries, uh, commentaries or the post-canonical version, they'll mention uh, liberation by wisdom, a person need to enter four jhanas. Now after the four jhanas, they must do this uh, vipassana, yeah, vipassana, insight meditation until they reach enlightenment. So it's very different from the suttas. And the suttas mention at each level a person can actually reach enlightenment. Even the first jhana, they do their contemplation, they can reach discernment release. Uh, likewise to the highest one, uh, the neither perception, non-perception, they can reach this discernment release. Whereas in this uh, awareness release, the sutta mentioned the Brahma Viharas will lead to the awareness release. So a person were to abide in the four sublime states and reflect correctly, then uh, that will lead to the awareness release. However, in the post-canonical version, uh, they kind of like flipped 
with the liberation by wisdom release. Yeah? Um, the belief awareness release, you need to do all the jhanas and you get enlightenment from there. So it's very uh, different from the sutta's version. So either case, uh, one needs to reflect on impermanence uh, to gain this certain level of wisdom for either uh, awareness or discernment release. <clears throat> okay, that's the kind of explanation. Um, next slide. When this was said, the Brahman householders of Sala said to the Blessed One, Magnificent Master Gautama, Magnificent, just as if he were to place upright what was overturned, to reveal what was hidden, to show the way to one who was lost, or to carry a lamp into the dark so that those with eyes could see forms. In the same way has Master Gotama, through many lines of reasoning, made the Dhamma clear. We go to Master Gotama for refuge, to the Dhamma and to the community of monks. May Master Gotama remember us as lay followers who have gone for refuge from this day forward for life. Uh, so this is uh, uh, end of the sutta, the conclusion. So these people uh, accepted the teachings and became the disciples of the Buddha. Okay, any questions so far with regard to this sutta? If not, I move on to the next one. Eh? Okay, let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> Okay, so um, we're going to talk about how practicing the so-called jhanas can actually lead to different um, Brahma worlds and lead to the different Brahma worlds. So this Pata Mana Nakarana Sutta, very long name. Okay, so uh, these are the four people. So the, it's the different shade people who practice concentration alone without Insight versus people who practice concentration with insight. Okay. Um, firstly, a mendicant quite secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from unskillful qualities, enters and remains in the first absor absorption, uh, the first jhana, which has the rapture and bliss born of seclusion, while placing the mind and keeping it connected, they enjoy it and like it and find it satisfying. If they abide in that, are committed to it and meditate on it often without losing it, when they die, they are reborn in the company of gods in Brahma's hosts. Okay, so the key word is if they abide in it and they meditate on it without losing it. So jhanas can be lost, you know. <laughs> A person who practice concentration, uh, if uh, it's like recharging the battery. So once you stop practicing concentration meditation, you lose the battery, then it's gone. Yeah, it's like a moment to mind moment thing. Even when we practice the routine, if let's say we <clears throat> plan the causes for entering, let's say the first level of concentration, if we switch to another object or we switch another theme then that first level will be gone. So it's uh, very fast. Uh, it's a uh, moment-to-moment -moment thing. Huh? So it's not like the jhanas are there forever. So that's the micro aspect. So in the macro aspect, also the same thing. A person can be reborn in the Brahma worlds, but after some time, they use up the karma, they use up the lifespan, they also go down. Huh? Okay, next The lifespan of the gods of Brahma's host is one eon. So one eon we mentioned is a very long time. That is the time of basically one universe cycle. Yeah, one universe cycle, one eon. So I think I gave the metaphor of the mountain. So if a person were to, every 100 years, huh, take a silk cloth and uh, graze the mountain once, uh, like Mount Everest, you rub it once and you walk off. 100 years, you you rub and walk off again. By the time you wear away the mountain, it is still not even one eon. So that is how long is this time span. 
an ordinary person stays there until the lifespan of the gods are spent and they go to hell or the animal realm or the ghost realm. Uh, so it is mentioned if a person uh, uses up all the good karmas, what's left is mostly the bad karmas. Yeah? So it will uh, lead them to the lower rebirth. But a disciple of the Buddha stays there until the lifespan of those gods is spent and they are extinguished in that very life. This is the difference between a learned noble disciple and an unlearned uh, ordinary person, that is, when there is a place of rebirth. So very interesting. A person uh, who, let's say, they at least they experience the Noble Eightfold Path, uh, they continuously put in right effort even in that time. So sometimes we complain, hey, we know time to meditate. These fellows have one eon of time. You know? One eon they can practice and improve a lot already. Uh, so, even in the first jhana realm, they can get liberated from there. Yeah, they don't have to go to the purer boats. So it depends on um, their aspiration and mental inclination, uh, the habitual karmas, whether they want to or are they inclined to spiritual practice? <clears throat> yeah, so these are the difference. So a person can just enjoy, use up all the good karmas and go to the lower realm, or they can stay in that Brahma world and practice until they reach liberation. So that's the difference, two differences, two choices. Okay, next. Yeah, very similar, and this talks about all the four jhanas. So the second groups of people, as the placing of the mind and keeping it connected are stilled, they enter and remain in the second absorption, the second jhana, which has the rapture and bliss born of immersion, with internal clarity and mind at one, without placing the mind and keeping it connected. Um, <clears throat> I think you over skip previous. Okay. Yeah. Where so where was I? Okay. With internal clarity and mind at one, without placing the mind and keeping it connected. They enjoy it and like it and find it satisfying. If they abide in that, are committed to it, and meditate on it often without losing it. When they die, they are reborn in a company of gods of streaming radiance. So that's the second jhana, Brahma world. So the terms here, earlier on they talk about uh, the rapture, bliss, and you know, internal clarity of mind and so on. So that is the uh, factors huh, of the second jhana. Okay, next. The lifespan of the gods of streaming radiance is two eons. So the Sutta's version is very different from the chart. So like I mentioned, uh, the chart that mentions the lifespan of the Brahma world is not accurate. But in the central Deva realms, the chart is quite accurate. So the lifespan of gods and streaming radiance is two eons. So that's two universe cycles. An ordinary person stays there until the lifespan of those gods are spent. Basically, they use up all the good karma. Then they go to the hell or the animal realm or the ghost realm. But the disciple of the Buddha stays there until the lifespan of those gods are spent. Then they are extinguished in that very life. This is the difference between a learned noble disciple and an unlearned ordinary person. That is when there is a place of rebirth. And so if a person the same thing, they... Um, if they take, really take refuge in the Dhamma, they follow the Noble Eightfold Path, they put in effort to practice in that two eons of lifespan, then they will you know, extinguish the karma, I mean transcend karma and reach enlightenment. Okay, next. So this is talking about the third jhana. Huh? Furthermore, with the fading away of rapture, they enter and remain in the third absorption where they meditate with equanimity, mindful and aware, personally experiencing the bliss of which the Noble Ones declare. Equanimous and mindful, one meditates in bliss, 
they enjoy it and like it and find it satisfying. If they abide in that, are committed to it and meditate on it often without losing it, when they die, they are reborn in the company of the gods, replete with glory. So that's the third jhana Brahma world. Um, <clears throat> so the same keywords you need to consistently practice and not lose it. That means every time you do your meditation sitting, you're able to assess uh, whichever level you're kind of practicing. Huh? So that is um, talking about without losing it. If let's say you meditate one time, you experience wow, something so peaceful, so nice. The next time you meditate, cannot experience it. That means uh, you don't have mastery, huh? no mastery over it. So what it mentions here is a mastery. That means every time you meditate or you want to meditate, you can enter this level of concentration. Okay, next slide. The lifespan of the gods replete with the glory is four eons. So from two to four. Eh? An ordinary person stays there until the lifespan of those gods is spent. Then they go to hell or the animal realm or ghost realm. But the disciple of the Buddha stays there until the lifespan of those gods is spent. Then they are extinguished in their very life. This is the difference between a learned noble disciple and an unlearned ordinary person. That is when there is a place of rebirth. So this one, the same thing. You have a longer lifespan, more time, more opportunities to practice if you are um, following the Noble Eightfold Path, you put in right effort. But if a person just enjoys uh, in that state of samadhi and don't want to investigate, then they're basically using up all the good karmas, yeah? using up all the battery. Okay, next. Furthermore, giving up pleasure and pain and ending former happiness and sadness they enter and remain in the fourth absorption. Huh? So this is the fourth jhana. <clears throat> Without pleasure or pain, with pure equanimity and mindfulness. They enjoy it and like it and find it satisfying. If they abide in that, are committed to it and meditate on it often without losing it. When they die, they are reborn in the company of gods of abundant fruit. The lifespan of the gods of abundant fruit is 500 eons. <clears throat> 500 eons. Okay, can we go back to the chart and see whether there's these gods of abundant fruit? Okay. <clears throat> so the gods of abundant fruit is this Vehapala Devas. Huh? So it's number 21. So in the fourth jhana, playing the first one. So not even in the pure abodes. Yeah, not even in the pure abodes. So they talk about the um, somehow if a person enter concentration for each level, I think they will just mention the first level of the three. Yeah, so if a person enter first jhana, they talk about retinue of Brahma, that's the the lowest spectrum. Likewise, for the second jhana, they also mention the lowest spectrum. Third jhana, they mention the lowest spectrum. So the chart is uh, way off. Huh? Okay, so the very fruitful devas, you see here, 100 eons. Okay, let's look at the suttas. <clears throat> okay. So the sutta mentioned 500 eons. So there's a big jump. Huh? So from... Uh, Jana was how many? Four eons become 500 eons. Okay, next. So the third jhana has four eons. Eh? An ordinary person stays there until the lifespan of those gods is spent. Then they go to hell or the animal realm or the ghost realm. But the disciple of the Buddha stays there until the lifespan of those gods is spent. Then they are extinguished in that very life. This is the difference between a learned noble disciple and an unlearned ordinary person. That is, when there is a place of rebirth. These are the four people found in the world. Uh, so this is basically um, talking about just jhanas alone. We, the summary of it is a person can enter the different Brahma worlds and they are, have two options, either 
uh, they choose to remain there and don't practice, continue to put in effort to practice, and they get reborn in the lower realms, or they continue to practice until they reach enlightenment. Eh? So that works for all four jhanas. Okay, next. <clears throat> so now we're going to compare these four jhanas with the four sublime states. And eventually you'll come to understand uh, each sublime state will lead to the relevant jhanas. Okay, mendicants, these four people are found in the world. What for? Firstly, a person meditates, spreading a heart full of love to one direction, and to the second, and to the third, the fourth, in the same way above, below, across, everywhere. Huh? So they spread all directions, all around. They spread a heart full of love to the whole world. Abundant, expensive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. They enjoy this and like it and find it satisfying. If they abide in that, are committed to it and meditate on it, often without losing it. When they die, they are reborn in the company of gods or Brahma's host. Uh, so the same thing um, with the previous sutta. Eh? Next slide. So the whole idea is to commit to the practice and not lose it. Eh? So if one day you practice the thing gone means uh, you never maintain. The lifespan of the gods of Brahma's host is one eon. Eh? So the same thing if a person practice metta, he can enter this uh, first jhana world which is one eon. An ordinary person stays there until the lifespan of those gods is spent. Then they go to hell or the animal realm or the ghost realm. Eh? Same thing as the previous one. But a disciple of the Buddha stays there until the lifespan of those gods is spent, then they're extinguished in that very life. This is the difference between a learned noble disciple and an unlearned ordinary person. That is when there is a place of rebirth. So you see the pattern. Eh? Next slide. Okay, so the second one, similar. <clears throat> if a person meditates spreading a heart full of compassion, so there's the second sublime state, then the rejoicing, that's the third sublime state, and equanimity, that's the fourth sublime state. To one direction, to the second, to the third, and all across, yeah, to the fourth, in the same way above, below, across, everywhere, all around, they spread a heart full of equanimity to the whole world. Abundant, expensive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will, they enjoy this and like it and find it satisfying. If they abide in that, are committed to it, they meditate on it, often without losing it. When they die, they are reborn in the company of gods of streaming radiance. The lifespan of gods of streaming radiance is two eons. So that's for compassion. Okay, next. Yeah, they are reborn in the company of gods replete of glory. So that's the lifespan uh, for those who practice appreciative joy, rejoicing. The lifespan of God's replete of glory is four eons. That's the third jhana plane. And they are reborn in the company of the gods of abundant fruit. Eh? So abundant fruit is the fourth jhana plane. So that's for practicing equanimity. And the lifespan of gods of abundant fruit is 500 eons, similar to the previous sutta. An ordinary person stays there until the lifespan of those gods is spent. Then they go to hell or the animal realm or the ghost realm. But the disciple of the Buddha stays there until the lifespan of those gods is spent, then they are extinguished in that very life. This is the difference between a learned noble disciple and an unlearned ordinary person. That is when there is a place of rebirth. These are the four people found in the world. So we see the connection uh, between the first jhana and loving kindness, second jhana and compassion, third jhana and the appreciative joy, and the fourth jhana with equanimity. So each sublime state uh, is actually one of the jhanas. So that's the end of the sharing. So we kind of complete this series. Huh? Next slide. Oh, we still have. Okay, so we end uh, the segment this segment and huh? we continue the next sutta the next slide uh, the next session okay um anyone any questions
No questions, all okay. No issues. Give a three count, then we go for a five minute break. Eh? Three, two, one. No questions. Okay, then we go for a break. See you all in five minutes' time. And at the meantime, we can think of uh, the next topic you all want to discuss about. Eh? Okay, so we find a comfortable posture, make sure our back is upright and the rest of the body relaxed. Okay, so we are going to start off with familiarizing huh, with this mindfulness of the body as the foundation so we are using the four elements sensations kind of meditation so we are feeling all the sensations throughout the entire body so the four elements are the earth fire wind and water Earth represents any hard and soft sensations. Fire is hot and cold. Wind is fast, slow movements. And the water is the moist or dry sensations. So the idea of this observation is uh, do not purposely create those sensations. Eh? Just observe in a relaxed manner. We let the sensations appear naturally by itself. And when they appear, we're going to wish them well and happy. So first learn to make peace, make friends with all these sensations. So do not control, do not struggle, no fighting. So as long as we Keep wishing them well and happy. That's treading the middle path, right thought. And the repetition is right effort. So the wishing the sensation well and happy, we need to keep looping like a mantra. And throughout the whole session, we always use the Four Noble Truths as a checklist, as a guideline. So the more we generate right thought, that is actually the Fourth Noble Truth. Practicing the Noble Eightfold Path, it should lead to the Third Noble Truth, which is the Reduction of craving and stress. So if you get calmer or less tension, then that means you are on the right track. But let's say the more you meditate, the more stressful, more anxiety, more craving, that means that's the first two noble truths. So the key is always emphasizing on planting the causes. That means keep generating right thought. Huh? So the peace is always the byproduct. And then we see how far can the mind settle down.
So in this particular phase, there is a limit to how far the mind can settle. So if you find that with the mind quite calm really, I cannot settle down any further. That's like the limit. Then that would be your neutral baseline emotion. So it's a neutral state, no jhanas yet. And we're going to remember this emotion, huh? we're using it as a reference. Yeah, and now we're going to wish may all beings in all directions well and happy. Above, below, and all across all directions. No need to purposely push the mind, huh? let it extend naturally by itself. However far the mind wish to extend doesn't matter. And in that widened sphere of attention, we are going to treat all beings as the four elements or the five aggregates. So you don't have to visualize that. Eh? So whatever sensation appear, we are going to wish may all beings be well and happy. So this is the lowest common denominator of experience, non-discrimination approach. So these sensations can appear inside the body or outside, near or far. Whenever they appear, just wish may all beings be well and happy. So we keep on repeating. Huh? Again, if we keep on wishing all beings well and happy, have all the right thought, right effort, and everything, it may trigger this 
right concentration. So in the first level of concentration, there's this joy and happiness. So if there's increment of joy and happiness compared to the neutral baseline emotion, so that would be the indicator. And regardless of what you experience, keep on wishing all beings well and happy. Treat everything else as a distraction, passing distraction. And we are now switching to the second sublime state, now, which is compassion. So for compassion, we are going to wish, may all beings be free from suffering. So using the same non-discrimination approach, all beings are made of the aggregates, the elements, so whatever sensation appear, then we wish may all beings be free from suffering. No need to imagine any scenario. I don't have to worry hey, how to help this person. Uh, are they okay or not? And that becomes restlessness and worry.
sort of conventional compassion is like very sad, very sorrowful. Or if, let's say the conditions are right, you have the concentrative kind of compassion. It should be more joyful or slightly more joyful than the loving kindness. So that's the indicator for the second level of concentration. And regardless of what you experience, keep on wishing all beings free from suffering, treat everything else as passing distraction.
Okay, then we can switch to the third sublime state, which is appreciative joy. And we're going to now rejoice in the accomplishments of all beings. Using the lowest common denominator every moment, every sentient being will gain some kind of new experience. Huh? So we can rejoice with all beings. New sensation appear. Rejoice with all beings. <clears throat> And if the conditions are right, we keep on rejoicing with all beings. And one may experience a different pleasant emotion. So we call that happiness. Eh? And that's the factor of the third level of concentration. And regardless of what you experience, keep on rejoicing with all beings. Treat everything else as a passing distraction. <clears throat>
key ingredient is right effort. Huh? Once you stop the right effort, you use up the battery, then the mind will go back to the lower realms. And then we move on to the fourth sublime state, which is equanimity. And in this reflection, we are going to use the concept of karma. All beings, we reap what we sow. So in this particular routine, no need to speculate or guess what we've done before in the past. No? We just use real-time evidence, any sensation appear, we just label it as karma's ripening. A new sensation appears, karma's ripening. We keep on repeating that. If, let's say, you experience like a neutral emotion, no joy, no happiness, and uh, it's a bit refreshing, 
and that would be the indicator for equanimity, eh? the emotion of equanimity associated with the fourth level of concentration. And regardless of what you experience, keep labeling karmas, ripening, treat everything else as a passing distraction. And then we are now going to add some insight, some reflection. So we are going to reflect on impermanence. So whatever sensation appears, we can label rising and passing.
Usually the first instance of the symptoms of detachment, one may feel joyful and a short kind of joy. And same thing regardless of what you experience, keep on reflecting on impermanence. So this one has no limit to how far you can detach. Huh? Keep on reflecting on impermanence and see how far you can go. And let's say if it's too quiet, we can reflect on the five aggregates. So the four element sensations, that's the form aggregate. 
and feeling aggregate is the pleasant, unpleasant, neutral feelings and the perception aggregate that is basically the labels you give to the object and the fourth aggregate is actually the karmic formations huh? why do your mind want to pay attention to, to this spot or why does it want to pay attention to that spot that is karmic all karma is ripening And the fifth aggregate is the consciousness, the awareness. So we can be aware with our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Six senses. And each of these aggregates are impermanent. They are actually five in one, but you can analyze them one by one. And before we end the session, same gentle reminder in all activities, whether we're standing, sitting, walking, or lying down, we can be mindful of the four, um, four sublime states or mindful of impermanence. And with that, we can gently open our eyes, formally end the session, informally continue to generate right thought. All right, any uh, questions? No issues? Okay, then we uh, move on. Huh? <clears throat> okay, dedicate merits. Akasata Chapumata Devanaga Mahitika Punyang tang anumodit wa chirang rakantu loka sasanang eta vata cha amhehi sampadang punya sampadang sabe deva sabe puta sabe sata anumodantu saba sampati sidiya. Dedication of marriage to departed. Idang me nyati nang ho tu sukita ho tu nyata yo. Idang me nyati nang ho tu sukita ho tu nyata yo. Idang me nyati nang ho tu sukita ho tu nyata yo. Aspiration 
imina punya kami na, mami bala sama kamu, satang sama kamu hotu, ya wali bana pati ya, sadu sadu sadu. Okay, and we end off by paying respects to the Buddha, bowing three times. First bow, second bow, third bow. Okay, that's it. Any announcements from Terence? Okay, and if you have suggestions for future uh, topics to discuss, do drop me a message or something and that's it good night